Welcome to Module 3, Flaring Forth. This is uh, our great discovery, the birth of the universe. It is something that every you know, culture has reflected on. Where did the universe come from? Where do we all, how do we get here? And so we have our, we have our way now in, in the scientific approach of thinking about this. And I was actually there at um, the, the place this happened um, in the early part of the 20th century. It's the work of Edwin Hubble down at, at Mount Wilson Observatory. And it's amazing to think about it as you walk into the observatory and you, and you see the, they still have the actual chair that Hubble was sitting in. But he just was sitting in this room and a room, this observatory, and with all these you know, instruments, but he was sitting there and simply paying attention. And the universe actually came to him, in a sense. The light came to him and had news of its origin. Still is hard to imagine. Uh, Stephen Hawking called this discovery the greatest discovery of the 20th century and possibly of all time. So it's this moment when humans have discovered their place within this larger story. What Hubble uh, found is that if you look at the light that comes to us, you can actually measure the movement of the, of the galaxies. And the galaxies that were twice as far away were moving twice as fast. That's what Hubble discovered. The galaxies that were ten times as far away from us were moving ten times as fast. So we have this rather incredible moment when the galaxies have been expanding away for billions of years and they've been releasing their light and finally on this planet one person was astute enough to notice this and, and exploding out of him was this knowledge that the universe had a beginning. Because see, if the galaxy is ten times as far away or moving ten times as fast, if you go back in time, all of the galaxies emerge from one place. The estimates now are that uh, the, the moment of the creation itself was 13.7 billion years ago. And we have a, an eruption, and then we have this complexification, and here we are. And now we're reflecting on this whole event that's taking place. Our observational data go back, not to the very, very beginning, but 99.99% go almost back to the beginning. And these these data are the uh, light that's been released at 380,000 years after the birth of the universe. So we can, as we look out, we'll see um, galaxies further, further, further back. And then we look so far back that we're actually seeing before the time of galaxies. So that if, we, if, we're, if we're looking at light that has been traveling to us, from 13 billion light years away. We're seeing light, we're seeing what was there 13 billion years ago. So we're actually able to see to a time when there are no galaxies. And we see back even to a time when there are no stars. And then we get to the light from almost the beginning of time. To go further, all the way to the birth of the universe, we have to rely now on, on just our, our, our theories, on just reasoning, because we don't have actual evidence from time that's beyond this, this wall of light. But what we've reconstructed then, using our imaginations and the scientific uh, theories that we have, what we've reconstructed is um, a sequence of transformations that we are calling the flaring forth. 
and it is um, maybe to step through it just quickly to give you an overview. You have this birth at time zero, and you have this immense um, heat. Now, there's also the question of what um, takes place before uh, time zero, and we have no information of this. We have simply a, a theory that the uh, the universe gave birth to the universe in, in in implicit form gave birth to the universe in an explicit form. So our our real knowledge and science starts after the birth of the universe. We have this sequence where we have the particles themselves are extremely hot, and they're expanding away from each other. The elementary particles of of electrons and quarks. But as they expand away, they form new communities. And the first communities to form are the protons and the neutrons, so that the, the quarks come together and form these larger particles. And the expansion continues, and the temperature drops further, and then suddenly you have the neutrons and the protons can begin to form, to, to adhere. And we have the existence of these nuclei, the stable nuclei. And the universe continues to expand and cool. And we have then the appearance of the first atoms. The first atoms come about at 380,000 years after the birth of the universe. So, and then this whole time then is the flaring forth itself. But what I, I find so fascinating about this, and I, and I hope to convey this to you, is that the conditions of the universe change and enable new forms of construction to take place. So you have, at the very, very beginning of time, you, you do not have the possibility for constructing atoms. The conditions are not right. But then with the the cooling of the universe, suddenly you have this window that opens up where we can create nuclei, the first forms of a community. And then later, this window opens up that enables us to form the first atoms. And then, once the atoms have formed, uh, just to complete this, the, you have the possibility for the atoms to come together to form the stars. And that would be um, a further module, we'll talk about that. Uh, the, uh, another way to, to think about this is um, in terms of your own lives, that we, we go through a number of um, challenging situations. I think they can be moments of great intensity. And there is a kind of creativity that's possible in these moments of intensity that actually isn't possible elsewhere. So it's, it's not ever finished. The universe never arrives at a place where it's done. It is rather that the, the, every moment has its own particular uh, power. And in the early universe, it was the time for creating stable matter, stable particles, and the first stable atoms. Now, I, I've talked about the universe being 13.7 um, billion years old, but it's important to realize that, and so we think of the, the, the birth of the universe as being 13.7 billion years ago. This is true. But at the same time, it's important to realize that the construction that took place during that time is now present in our own bodies, so that all of those particles that stabilized in the flaring forth are now part of, they are what enable us to exist. And every um, atom of hydrogen that pervades our body, every one of these atoms was actually constructed there at the flaring forth. So that we begin to realize that in a real sense, in a real technically accurate sense, the construction of our bodies began 13.7 billion years ago. So again, we have this challenge of, of uh, you know the fact from the science. Now, is it possible that you can embody that 
so that you can begin to realize that you are, you are a construction of the universe that required these 13.7 billion years. It'd be one of the ways in which we begin to see that we're not separate from the universe, we're not separate from nature, rather the universe is our body.